Judge, thank you for your kindness to our families. And thank you for taking this trial so seriously. There's nothing more important to my family than receiving justice for Alex. I'd like to start about the victim in, with the victim impact statement that Karen and I gave earlier. It was really difficult. My wife and I tried to verbalize the pain that we feel every day, knowing that Alex is never coming home and he was taken from us in such a horrible, horrible manner. The other very upsetting part of the victim impact statement was the restrictions that were placed on our statement. We were prohibited from talking about the murderer, the crime, and the punishment that he deserves. We wanted that creature to receive. To add insult to injury, the Florida state law instructed you to tell the jury to completely disregard everything that we had just said. It's not right, and I will work to fix this injustice for the next family. Both juror Melody Vinoy and Mr. Johnson said that the law failed the families, and I agree with them. I just rewatched the defense's closing argument, and one thing that really stuck out at me was their insistence that the jury to the jury that the murder had slipped through the cracks. The defense knows that that is a lie. They know Sheriff Bob Galtieri, the chair of the MSD commission, had said that he had never seen an individual that has received more mental health services than the Parkland murderer. But in closing arguments, you reiterated over and over again that he didn't get the proper services throughout his childhood. Let's look at the facts and see if that was actually true. Dr. Kravitz, his psychologist when he was eight years old, spent 15 sessions with him over 13 months. Then from 2005 to 2007, at Coral Springs Elementary, he received direct language therapy multiple times per week and family counseling weekly. Kara Dad Harvey, another witness that testified a mental health counselor from Henderson Behavioral Health, spent seven sessions with him from 2009 through December of that year. And in 2011, he received more direct language therapy once a week and counseling once a week. At Westglades, he received ESE services for academics and social development with more pull-out language therapy and counseling. Dr. Karp, his second psychiatrist, treated for him for the next three and a half years. And she had him, had him on multiple medications from Stratera to Focalin to Respital. But then former public defender Howard Finkelstein of Broward County said that, quote, we let one of our children fall off the grid. That wasn't true. This individual didn't fall off the grid. He was the grid. He was getting every service that they offered. Services continued. Camelot conducted 27 home visits between 2013 and 2014. Then he received more services from, from Henderson. From their time with him, they turned over 700 pages to, for this trial. 700 pages of therapy sessions. He received weekly therapy sessions between 2014 and 2015 that totaled hundreds of hours of therapy. Does that sound like somebody that fell off the grid? Finkelstein? Jessica Flournoy testified from Westglades Middle School. She was the admissions counselor in 2015. She said he was in group sessions for two and a half months, and then they moved him to individual sessions. During the 2014-15 school year, when he was in ninth grade, he made a lot of progress we heard, with therapy at home and in school. And he only had two absences that year and a GPA of 3.14. A parent advocate then also met with Linda an additional 47 times. During the 15-16 school year when he was in grade 10, he received language therapy again once a week and counseling once a week. In addition, he was, he was receiving counseling provided not only by the school but also by Henderson. 
Then Dr. Nagin, his next psychiatrist, treated him for the next five years up until right before the shooting. But Gordon Weeks, the chief Broward uh, public defender, said he fell off the cracks. But we have to, and we have to save him now. The defense, the defense in their closing argument said that if he had just had the proper diagnosis, that things would have been different. Really? How? His therapists were treating his behavior and his symptoms. Nothing would have changed. Would they have changed his medicine? No. He was on medicine after medicine over the 15 years. He's on medicine now. And he still wants to kill. She said he needed to be properly diagnosed so that he could receive the proper programs and services and accommodations and interventions. He got all of those. Altogether, he had well over 200 individual sessions with mental health professionals. Does that sound like somebody that fell off the grid? They tried everything. They couldn't have given him more services. Over the course of his life, starting at a very young age, he received more than most kids in America will ever receive. It's irresponsible for you to make a statement that is an outright lie. You're making the mental health crisis in America worse by misrepresenting what actually happened to the Parkland murderer. Just so you can receive fame and notoriety and go on a book tour? There are so many people that really need mental health services and did not get them but that's not the case with the Parkland murderer. His psychiatrists, his psychologists, counselors, ESE teachers all testified to that effect. He was on medication for most of his life. The problem was that he didn't receive, not that he didn't receive services or medication. The problem was that none of it worked. Prior to the trial, I had a lot of hate and anger in my heart for his mother. Today is the anniversary of your mommy's death, isn't it? She's the one who brought who bought him his first gun. But after learning more details of her life, living with that animal, during the trial I understood how much she tried to do for the murderer. There are kids in foster care with no families. Kids in abusive homes and kids living with drug-addicted parents. But that's not the situation. He lived in a loving home. Linda Cruz loved him and tried to help him for the 18 years she was with him. She continued and she never gave up. She took him to doctor after doctor, tried medication after medication. God only knows how much money she spent of course there are going to be breaks. No one can be 100% consistent for 18 years, especially when nothing seemed to work. Dealing with those two monsters, I'm sure it was emotionally and physically exhausting. But she was pretty consistent between the ages of 3 and 18. When some things aren't working, you stop for a while. And she did, but then she went right back. And she continued all the way up through her death. She never gave up on him. You said that the Camelot counselor...